All right, so in this video, we're going to draw on our skills from the last video, resolving vectors into components. And we're going to use that to see another way we can add vectors together in 2D. But instead of using scale diagrams, we're going to use trigonometry and Pythagoras to do it. OK, so um, let's start off by recapping some things that we've met or we've been we're going to be using in this video. So there are three things that I want to pick up on. Um, so I would like you to pause the video and see if you can answer these questions. So we're going to see what are the rules for vector addition? And we've got a clue here of what I might be looking for. Um, what does Pythagoras theorem state? And what, what do the rules of trigonometry tell us the following are? So what's sine theta equal to? What's cosine theta equal to? And what's uh, tan theta equal to? All right, so pause the video, have a crack at that, or maybe on a scrap piece of paper, and then we'll pick it up from there. All right, so let's uh, take a look. There are three stages to uh, adding vectors together. So we need to make sure we uh, arrange the vectors tip to tail and we can do that in any order um i if i'm doing scale diagrams i tend to start with the largest one first but once we're into this stage it doesn't really matter and then so that, that's what uh, number one is showing us the second stage is uh, if we're if we are doing a scale diagram uh, choose a scale and draw the vectors. So here we're not actually going to be doing that, so we don't really need to worry about uh, stage two anymore. And then final stage is uh, draw a resultant from the start to the end. So we're still going to be doing that, but we're going to be doing it using rough diagrams now. We don't have to worry about this stage here doing the scale ones anymore. So we're going to be making use of Pythagoras theorem um, later on, so I think it's worth um stating so it's essentially stating that the uh square of of the here's a test of my spelling hypotenuse i think that's right of a right angled triangle is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides so in terms of ours, what our triangle that I've got sketched over here, what that means, oh, I've got the highlighter up, that's not very really helpful. So that means h squared is going to be equal to the adjacent side squared plus the opposite side squared. You've probably seen this in the form a squared equals b squared plus c squared before, um, but this is what it is relevant to this triangle over here. And then finally, rules of trigonometry. So we're going to be using... Um, Essentially, so Katoa is how most people learn this. So we know that sine theta is going to be equal to the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. Cosine of theta is going to be the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. Tan theta is going to be the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. And we'll be making use of all of these things as we add vectors in 2D. So let's... Um, have a look at how we're going to be adding vectors in 2D. Now we're using these other processes instead. So our first stage is going to be resolving all the vectors into two directions that are perpendicular to one another. So if we were doing it in 3D, we'd resolve into three directions. Uh, but here we're just going to resolve into two. Um, we're going to add together the vectors that are parallel. And then we're going to add together the vectors that are perpendicular uh, to find the resultant. Okay, so those are our stages. So you can see that's in purple. So I think that is worth adding to our notes that we've been collecting as we've gone through this video series. So pause the video and do that now. And then I'll take you through an example. Okay, so let's see these stages in action. So we've got an object that moves 20 meters at 30 degrees clockwise from north. So you can see that's represented by this first diagram here. So we've gone 20 meters, 30 degrees clockwise from north, and then 10 meters, 60 degrees clockwise from north. So we've gone 10 meters, 
60 degrees clockwise from north. So I haven't been too fussed about the scale here. My 20 meters and 10 meters looks about the same size. It's just so I've got a sketch so I can visualize what's going on. So then what I've done is got worked out what this angle inside the triangle is. Okay, so if we're going to do trigonometry, we need to know an angle inside the triangle other than this 90 degree one here. So what we're going to do is we're going to resolve the 20 meter vector into a component in the, in the east direction, which I've called the A because it's the adjacent side, and the north direction, which is the opposite side. And the same thing with the 10 meter, we're going to resolve into the east direction and the north direction. So why are we doing that? Well, you'll notice the next step is we're going to add the vectors that are parallel. So we can now add A1 and A2 once we've figured out what they are. And we can add O2 and O1 once we've figured out what they are. And then finally, once we've figured that out, we can then add those two things together using Pythagoras. So let's break that down and go through our stages. So First thing we're going to do is figure out what O1, A1, O2, A2 are. So let's do it. So we know that uh, sine of 60 is equal to O1 over 20, which means that O1 is 20 sine 60. So I'm actually not going to calculate what that is for now. I'll just leave it like that. And we know that cosine of 60 is going to be equal to A1 over 20. So A1 is 20 cosine of 60. So those are our two sides on our first, that's, that's, that's our first vector resolved into the east and north directions. We'll do the same thing with the other one. So sine of 30 is going to be O2 over 10. So we can see that O2 is 10 sine 30. We know that cosine of 30 is going to be A2 over 10. So therefore A2 is going to be 10 cosine. 30. So what we've done, we've completed it, we've resolved all the vectors into two directions that are perpendicular to one another, because the north and the east direction are perpendicular to one another. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate, we're going to add together the ones that are in the same direction. So we can add the O's together, because they're in the same direction, and we can add the A's together in the same direction. So I'm going to call it the sum of the O's is going to be 20 sine 60 plus 10 sine 30. And I am actually going to calculate what that is at this point. So 20, 20 times sine 60 plus 10 times sine of 30. Uh, now I'm just going to, it says 22.3205. We're going to be using this later on, so I'm not going to round it off too much. Sum of the A's uh, would be 20 cosine 60 plus uh, 10 cosine 30. Quick check to make sure you're doing this correct is we should have basically sines and cosines, but otherwise everything's the same. So let's do that too. That's 10 times sine uh, cos even. And that is uh, 18.6602. So I'm gonna keep those as unrounded numbers. Okay, so now, We've complete, so essentially we've now done stage one and stage two. So now we need to add these two things. So I just want to show you what we essentially have created here. So we have essentially created this new right angle triangle, which has sides, some of the A and some of the O's. And we're going to be using Pythagoras to figure out what the displacement is. But I just want to quickly show you what's going on here. So when we add vectors, remember, we add them tip to tail, right? So here was our uh, 20 meters, and then we added our 10 meters on the end of it, and we've got them so that they're tip to tail. And our resultant, which we can see in the diagram, should go from the start, which is over here, and it should go to the end, like that. So I just want to show you what we have done. So we've split the 20 meters, into those two vectors and we've split the 10 meters into these two vectors here and so this side down here sum of the a is essentially this side and this side here and then the sum of the o's is this side here plus this side here 
So that, that's what we've actually done. So this displacement over here on the left hand side is the same as this one over here. So that's kind of showing with a diagram what we're doing. So let's actually do this now. So we can now calculate what our displacement is and we can also figure out what our angle is. So we're going to need to do the square root of 22 point blah blah, blah squared plus 18 point six blah, blah blah squared. So let's do that. So I've still got the 18.6 in my calculator. So square that plus 22.3205 squared. Now we square root that and we get uh, 29.1 meters. So that's the magnitude of our displacement. We also need to figure out what the angle is. So given that we know the opposite and the adjacent side, I'm going to be using tan here. So we know that tan theta is equal to the sum of the O's over the sum of the A's, uh, which means that theta is the inverse tan of sum of the O's over sum of the A's, which is inverse tan. Sum of the O's was the 22.3 blah, blah, blah. This is the 18.6 blah, blah. So let's actually calculate that. So 22.3205 uh, divided by 18.6602, the inverse turn of that, and it comes out as uh, 50.1 degrees there. So we found our magnitude and we found our direction, and you can see that's, um, um, so that's above the east direction there if you look at the uh, theta that I've actually shown in the diagram there and um, so there's a lot of stages that we've gone through there um, and we went through that fairly quickly so what I'm going to talk do is talk you through another example where I've introduced something slightly different that we have to be aware of so let's take a look at our second example we want to We've got a force at 30 degrees to the right of vertical and a force 50 newtons at 45 degrees to the left of vertical. So the first thing I've done, just as I did before, is I've essentially drawn sketches of what that looks like and turned them into right angle triangles with the components I'm trying to calculate. So here's, that's what we've got over here. So our 100 newtons is 30 degrees to the right of vertical. So that's why that's 30 degrees and that's 100 newtons. The other one is 50 newtons to the left of vertical. So that's why it's going this way. And then just as before, I then figured out what an angle inside this triangle is. And also remembering this is a right angle triangle. So we actually know that one. And we do, in theory, know what uh, this other angle is too, if we, if we wanted to do it that way. Um, so we're going to then follow the same steps. So we're going to resolve those two forces into the same perpendicular directions. So that's what we can see. We're going to try and figure out what uh, O1 is. We're going to try and figure out what A1, A2, and O2 are. So that's what you can see here. But this is where the thing that's slightly different is that we have to pay attention to. So we have to remember that directions which are to the right and upwards are on our positive directions, which means directions to the left and down are our negative directions. So that, that's where there's a new thing that we have to pay attention to. So A1 is just going to be 100 times by cosine of 60. Now, strictly speaking, it is cosine of 60 is equal to A over 100. I've just simplified that uh, straight away. O1 is 100 sine of 60. A2 is minus 50 cosine of 45. Well, why is it minus? If you notice the diagram, A2 is to the left, so we have to give it a minus sign. O2 is positive because you see it's going upwards and it's 50 sine 45. So this is where we have to pay attention. So I've actually been very explicit here and going, these ones are all upwards and to the right. This one is negative. So the reason that's important is when we start adding the A's together, we're going to end up with this subtraction sign in here because 
A2 is going to cancel out part of A1. Okay, so we're going through exactly the same step. We're going to add our A's together and add our O's together, and we can then get a result. And I'm going to actually calculate what that is now. So 100 times cosine of 60 minus 50 times cosine of 45. That is 14.6446, uh, blah, blah, blah. Then we've got 100 times sine of 60 plus 50 times sine 45. And we get 121.9578, blah, blah, blah. And then we can go through exactly the same stages we did before. We can do 14.6 blah, blah, blah squared plus 121.9 blah, blah, blah squared. So I've already got the 121 in my calculator. So let's square that and let's add 14.6446 squared. Square it, the answer. Now we get uh, 123 newtons. So that is the magnitude of it. And then what we need to do is then calculate our angle. So we know that theta is going to be 10 to the minus 1, sum of the O's over sum of the A's, which is 10 to the minus 1, sum of the O's is the 121, blah, blah, blah. Sum of the A's was 14.6, blah, blah, blah. And that is equal to 21.9578. So I'd write 14.6446 inverse 10 of answer gives us 83 uh, degrees, and that's um, above right horizontal. As you can see, that's the angle theta that we've indicated in there. Okay, so no, that's not going to work anymore because of where that is. Okay, so that's a couple of examples. So what we're going to do is finish off by um, getting you to have a go at this so we can see um, how well you've picked up on the things that we've done. And then I'll review this question so we can see how it works. So, so far, we've added some displacements and we've added some forces. So in this one, we're going to add some accelerations, but that doesn't actually change anything. We're still just adding vectors together. So it's got an acceleration at 10 meters per second squared right at 30 degrees below the horizontal and it's got another acceleration left at 45 degrees above the horizontal and we want to know what the overall acceleration is um, so start off by having a sketch of those two vectors and then see if you can add them together to get their resultant magnitude and direction Okay, so let's do this. So uh, let's do some quick sketches. So it's right, but 30 degrees below the horizontal. So we've got a vector like that. And it's 30 degrees like that. And that's uh, 10 meters per second squared. And the other one is left 45 degrees above the horizontal. So if we draw in our horizontal line, that's 45 degrees in there. So let's then put our components on. So we are going to split into those two vectors, and here we're going to split into those two vectors. Uh, let's call them uh, A1, O1, and uh, O2, A2. So you can see here we've actually already got the angle inside our triangle, so we don't need to figure that out, which is quite nice. And we can see here that if we take uh, sine 30, it is going to be 1 over 10. So 1 is 10 sine 30. We know that cosine 30 is going to be a1 over 10, which means that a1 is 10 cosine 30. We do exactly the same thing with our second diagram. We know that sine 45 is equal to O2 over, uh, again, that's 10, it would be what I assume there, because we've got 10 degrees, 10 meters of the same right and left. And then we've got uh, cosine 45 is equal to A2 over 10. And then we can figure out what that is. 
10, sine 45, negative 2 is 10, cosine 45. So we've got our sides, which we're now in a position to add together. So sum of our a's, 10 cosine 30 plus 10 cosine 45. Sum of our o's is going to be 10 sine 30 plus 10 sine 45. And I guess we could calculate what that is at this stage. That would probably be helpful. That's what we've done so far. 10 cosine 30 plus 10 times cosine of 45. Uh, gives us 15.731. Ooh. I need to be very careful here. I've made a error, which it's important we pick up. So the thing to spot is with A2, that should be minus 10 because that is acting to the left. And the other one I should pick up is that O1 should be minus 10 there because it's acting downwards there. So let's actually uh, pick that up in our working. So cosine of 45, this one should be downwards, and O1 should also be downwards, so that should be minus 10, that one. So let's uh, now do those calculations, but do them correctly. So 10 times cosine of 30 is 8.66025. And then we're going to do minus 10 times sine 30 plus 10 times sine 45. Okay, and that's actually come out as uh, 2.07106, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so now we're in a position to figure out what our overall acceleration is. So our acceleration is going to be the square root of 8.66025 squared plus 2.07 squared. Let's do that calculation. Squared plus 8.66025 squared. Square root that gives us uh, 8.9 meters per second squared. And we can do that theta is 10 to the minus 1. Sum of the O's over sum of the A's. Let's just remind ourselves what we're doing here. So we've created ourselves a right angle triangle where this is some of the A's, this is some of the O's, and we're trying to figure out our angle and our acceleration in here. So that's why it's some of the O's over some of the A's. So that's 10 to the minus one. Some of the O's is 2.07. That's 8.66. And let's calculate that. 2.07106 and we're doing the inverse tan of that and that gives us 13.4 uh, degrees above right horizontal. Okay, so that gives us our, um, we've got our magnitude and we've now got our direction there. So um, that brings us to an end of this video, looking at how we can use resolving in Pythagoras to add vectors together. Um, so where I'm going to go with this next is I'm going to do a video on the sine and cosine rules, and then I'll show you how we can use those to add vectors together. So it gives us a third way we can add two vectors together if we want to. Um, but that's where I will leave off with this particular video here.